uh, the night before I got deployed to Iraq, and my mm -hmm. dad was 83 years old at the time, and we went to have a drink at his neighborhood pub, and he was in pretty good health, and my mom had passed away some years before. And I said, you know, you've never told me about your war. And he started laughing, and he said, you come back next year, and uh, one piece, and I'll tell you about my war, and you can tell me about your war. And unfortunately, about seven months later, I got that call from the Red Cross that nobody wants it. You have to come yeah, home. And, uh, and I got home, and you know, I spent about a day with him, and he passed. And, uh, and, but he was, had his family and all he loved. He was a very simple man. He never made more than $40,000 a year in his life, but he mm -hmm. loved his wife and his church and his family and his town. And missed my mother very deeply. And uh, so he had a good life. And I left, you know, went to the, we had the funeral, and I went back to Iraq a few days later. And I tell that story, Sheriff, not for any sense of, of sympathy or, or, or anything towards me. I tell it because we've got so many people in our society who are just quiet heroes. Mm -hmm. and, and as I say, you don't have to put a uniform on. Mm -hmm. You may be working out in the streets of the neighborhoods of Roxbury, just trying on a daily basis to make the world a little bit of a better place. You may have fought to build up a business by its bootstraps. You may have raised a family all by yourself and then gone to college as an adult. Uh, there are so many people. And I suggest that people tell their stories, be it veterans or any of those other people I just described, because how else do the young people that are out in our communities around here have role models and know what sacrifices went before to create the communities that we live in? So you know, you know public safety, you know homeland security, you know what it means to be in service to your country. Talk to me about your definition, your idea of what it means to be a patriot and patriotism. I think if we all realize that the welfare of our neighbor, whether we know them or not, should matter a lot, to me that's the definition of patriotism. Mm -hmm. Because if we all take care of each other, then the country rises up and the country is taken care of. It's the small things that matter. If we take that into account, um, we love our country and we love the values that our country stands for. And I like to think that that's what I I try to do each day when I walk into the state house. And for many years, I judge my actions on what will my dad think about this? Mm -hmm. What would he have done in this situation? And I still do that. But also now I have the opportunity to say, what would my wife think about this? What would my kids, 14, uh, 15, 14, 13, and 10, think about it? And because they're the ultimate constituency. They're the first constituency and they're the last constituency. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing good for them, then likely you're doing good for your neighborhood, your street, your community, your city, your town, your commonwealth, and your country. And I call that being a patriot. Just day by day realizing that as, you know, as we walk through this life, we want to leave a positive legacy. We want to be, at the end of the day, you want to look back and say, yeah, I did the right thing. And I think it's all tied into that definition of, of patriotism because if we believe in what this country stands for and if we believe in how it was, a, it was founded, that we are a commonwealth. Uh -huh. And that as Governor Patrick said, and I've had my disagreement with Governor Patrick, but I tell you, I appreciate this line, Massachusetts invented America. And if we believe in those basic tenets of what created Massachusetts that then led to the creation of America, that means being a good neighbor, being a good friend, mm -hmm. being a good family member. That's patriotism. So politically, you've been in the legislative body for 19 years. Right. What does the future hold? Uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. Um, I have not enjoyed my career more than I have in the past few years. I really enjoy it. I really feel like on a daily basis I'm having a, a good effect in my little way, on the public safety, on the homeland security of our commonwealth, um, and, and in my district. And I think what I'd like to do is take that, uh, that enjoyment, that energy, that motivation that I have right now, and, and make a, a jump uh, to a statewide level. And once we get into September and I've got a good piece of legislation, a thoughtful, deliberate piece of legislation on gun violence and public safety wrapped up and given to the House to debate, and once we get through the Boston uh, preliminary election, um, probably about the third week of, uh, of uh, September, I'm going to announce that uh, I'm going to run for lieutenant governor of the Commonwealth. And I think I can bring that energy uh, on a broader basis, a statewide basis, and uh, offer it to the people. And the people I've talked to so far seem to uh, 
uh, appreciate the idea and think I can do a good job. And Tim Murray laid the foundation of uh, quite a portfolio in the governor's office in a, in a, of military and infrastructure, keeping the bases we have here. Still, he, he led that effort, and the bases produce about a billion dollars into the Massachusetts economy every year. But he also led the task force on, uh, on cities and towns. And I feel through my experience in the legislature, I understand not just what small towns like mine, like Clinton, Massachusetts, which is pretty much, it's, this, it's a wonderful town and a, and a great place to have been brought up, but it's, it's in this post-industrial age, it's had to fight to cling on to its, its identity. Mm -hmm. When the mills left, and, and the same story as 10,000 other cities and towns between here and Chicago. When the mills went south, they had to find something else. And, and it's been a very creative town and created a, uh, the Russian, uh, the Museum of Russian Icons and the Gallery of African Arts and some new restaurants. And it's really reforming itself. And I want to take that experience and share that on a statewide level. In the city of Boston, I have many, many members of the Boston and the Suffolk County delegation that are supporting me in these efforts. And I've learned from them. And you get informed and you go forward and what it means uh, to the communities out here in, in Roxbury and Mattapan and Dorchester. And we will be having, actually, we're trying to work with uh, Reverend Walker's church to have a, a forum mm -hmm. on gun violence in the coming weeks. She came to one of our hearings and testified incredibly eloquently with a group of young people from her, her congregation and the NAACP uh, young, um, uh, young Persons Lead Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, we have to go there and we have to talk to uh, that group of people to see how gun violence affects them on a daily basis. So we've got to, uh, uh, I, I think I carried that with me, that I'd be able to bring to the Lieutenant Governor's office. The city of Boston gets its water from my district, from the Wachusett Reservoir. Mm -hmm. We've always felt that we've been great environmental stewards, and that's been a battle every year to about development around that reservoir and that watershed, so I know a tremendous amount about environmental issues. But that 50 miles out there in Clinton would affect the city of Boston. And so we've tried to uh, be very good environmental stewards over my time in the legislature. Let me ask you this, and no condescension to these uh, cities that I'm about to mention, but you look at a place like Worcester with your airport out there, I understand JetBlue is coming out there, and I mean, that's going to bring other um, uh, vibrant forms uh, of business that way. Boston is, is doing pretty darn well, and there are other cities and, and towns in Massachusetts doing pretty well. How is it that uh, these cities in the Commonwealth, have been able to stay away from some of the uh, the downturns that are maybe a Cleveland or a Detroit has experienced. What are we doing that's a little bit different than some of the other uh, cities across the country? I think we're working together. We realize that something like JetBlue isn't just a uh, an economic driver for the city of Worcester or Worcester County. That's an economic driver for the entire Commonwealth. Um, and, and so issues like that, we don't forget our brothers and sisters out in Springfield, out in Chicopee, up in North Adams, out in Franklin County. We are a commonwealth and we try to share the wealth. And so we focus on things like uh, uh, grants, CDBG grants that, you know, we just got a nice one out in the town of Clinton um, that can affect, it will affect Clinton, but it will also bring in business from surrounding towns. It will provide jobs uh, for people in those other towns. And we realize that it, it all dovetails in together. Um, that what happens in Springfield, if it's economically related or, 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 or gun violence related, can, ha can have a spin-out effect on the rest of the Commonwealth. And we try to work together on that. And uh, it's, it's good to have you know, great leadership from people like Governor Patrick, who will concentrate on the cities and towns and uh, in, in these outlying districts as well. So I think it's the fact that we've had a commitment and we've had a good administration that focuses on not just the bigger cities, but the rural areas, the suburban areas. Uh, you know, we've got this great Gateway Cities program, mm -hmm. which is fantastic, putting some emphasis on those areas of our Commonwealth. But we just don't stop there. We go out and we look at these grants, uh, these community development block grants that will help you know, a town like Clinton or uh, the, 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 uh, up in Fitchburg yesterday, uh, just north of me, there was a great announcement from the Transportation uh, Department about uh, really improving the transportation infrastructure out to that part of the Commonwealth and to shortening the trip from Fitchburg into Boston to just about an hour. So it makes it uh, uh, an attractive uh, alternative to driving in. So I, I think although we sit on Beacon Hill 
we don't we don't just look out the window and down at the beautiful uh, common and uh, and the public gardens across the street. We can look out and we can see all the way to the Berkshires. And we have I'll tell you one thing: driving around this Commonwealth uh, in my getting ready to uh, run for lieutenant governor, as you realize. It's a beautiful state out there. I was up in Marblehead last night. I was out in North Adams in Franklin County uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful commonwealth that we have here. And in some ways, it's a bigger state than we think it is. Mm -hmm. In some ways, it's a much more rural state mm -hmm. than we think it is. Right. But in other ways, it's, it's good that we, uh, you know, in a couple hours, we can be in the Berkshires or down on the Cape or out in the Vineyard. And, uh, and the fact that I think we do realize we are a commonwealth. You know, it's a good thing that you went through that training and got your body and your mind set. Um, to be strong when you wanted to go into uh, in service because running back and forth across this commonwealth <laughs> is <laughs> no joke and you're going to need every ounce of energy and strength uh, that you can muster but I really want to thank you for coming on sure, today. Sheriff, thank you. It's been a real uh, pleasure. Yeah, it's been great to, to, to hear you talk about issues of public safety you know, and homeland security and talk about what it means to be a patriot and patriotism and looking out for one another. So I really do thank you. And God speak to you, you know, with your race. And please come back and talk to us again. I look forward to it. Okay, sir. Thank, thank you, you very Sheriff. much. All right, folks, we are out of time. We're out of here. We'll be back again next week. Until then, you take care of yourself. Peace.